So then there are one, one indicator is like, so you're always going to keep him control so that you control his ability to hit you, right? So this is mostly keeping him from punching you too much. Mm -hmm. All right, so he might do this to put weight on you to try to crush you. You know, this is something, this is very common for someone who maybe doesn't know too much what he's doing. I've also seen, you know, uh, well, yeah. And some wrestlers will do this because they know how to apply their body weight. So whatever side he picks <coughs> that leg up on is the side you want to hip out towards. So from here, open your guard, let your leg rest on his leg and have him support your weight. If he collapses, well, he's back here at state, you know, this, this part. But he's provided an opportunity. So uh, keep the arms controlled, or at least this side, you know, so that you're not getting punched. Hip, use your weight, your leg on his leg to hip out that direction. And you may have to go a couple times, depends on how flexible you are. So you can kind of sneak this in. Then with your feet flexed, put the knee pit on him, right? So in this position, because I'm gonna elevate this side of him, I need to control this arm because this one can post out the balance. So it's just like the trap and roll for the mount. You want to block one side of him from being able to post out, right? So from here, I'll switch. Or if I've got the space, I'll underhook. But since he's a, a little bit further down on the body than higher, I'll switch to the head. On this side, I drop this leg as much as I can to the ground. And depending on where his arm is, how you wrap it up may change. Like he's kind of low here, so I'm gonna have to scoop it this way. But as I want also to lift him, I wanna be as sideways as I can be. If I'm flat, that's gonna be really difficult to do. So I'll be sideways with my hook in his knee hip. I'm gonna scoop this up, chop this, I'm sorry, raise this up, chop this, scoop this, kind of the same time. So start to lift so that he'll fall and I can ride up on him. I'm just throwing him off and roll away. So, depending on where we are. So he posted up there. So I'm gonna switch. You may even switch control here. That's fine too. Because maybe I can collapse this, right? Or if I can't, I can get ready. Do as sideways as I can. May have to hip out twice. Or if I move it this one, when I get under his leg, then hook this, you know, sweep this up, cut this, uh, elevate that. Typically I like to elevate a little bit beforehand to get him to turn a little bit. <clears throat> and we'll look on. That's how we guard, like we went over the Uli uh, Garami a few weeks ago. Um, <clears throat> but I prefer sweeps because it changes the position. Uh, okay, so we've got him down, and somehow he manages to like kind of pop up. So he's trying to sit up and get in posture, right? Do you remember posture? So down on Yeah. And it's not like to say that, but you've got to have some kind of control here because if I can use, move your, if I can move your hands, well then I'll be back in guard. So that's why I like, he wants to control this area, but also I want to control that area and keep him from there because then I can use my legs to get him back here. But he wants control there. So like, if he doesn't have posture, let's say you're sitting up, but you're not really in posture, like your kamai is broken. Well, that allows me to pull him forward with my legs or push him away with my legs. So if he was like trying to punch me, I can keep him, what can you fall through? I can keep him away from me and then I can pull him in, right? And get, so like any other type of thing, we either want to be completely out or completely in. That middle range is the dangerous area. So, <clears throat> so let's say we have him down and he starts, I sense he's going to pop up. So you kind of let him a little bit. How you control him, you can either keep a, a, a hook on the back of his head, you can grab his hair. <laughs> You want to be nice, you can do with a collar, right? Uh, this would still work if you had a shirt. 
t-shirt this will last leverage because it gives you could do this with two hands on its wrists I've, I've done that before it's not quite as good though but the basic is you, as you feel him coming trying to get up time it and get a, a collar grab and then some kind of hand on his wrist whether it's a sleeve or the actual wrist open your guard up pop out and you want your shin to go kind of diagonally across his chest. This foot, again, hooks, flex your toes, don't have him pointed. Because then he can slip away and get to your back. Because I got nothing controlling him, and now he's in my back, now I've got back problems. So if I can get here and he tries that, like he'll just drive me with me. Right? So it prevents him from getting my back. The grip here, I'm pushing with my shin, I'm pulling with my grip. So I'm creating some tension here, some connection. Again, this leg, I won't flat if I can help it. I won't be kind of sideways here. And so I pull with my leg and my grip, and I also pull with my, my sleeve grip. This one, you kind of turn with your spine and like you're looking at your watch. Okay and do that all at the same time. So come up here and then I start to chuck. Oops, sorry. Yeah, there you go. You have to get him high enough. Then come back up if this base is too wide. Like this base was a little bit wide for me. But <clears throat> so since he's going, so I keep him from really getting closer if I can. And time this so one more time. There. Right? So pull him with your leg and your hand with your wrist watch. And kind of almost like you're going to look this way. But common mistakes is try to do it like this. Or like, uh, what was the other one? Kind of looking that way. I mean, Arch your spine. So pull. He's tibble now. See so how far his base is over his, or his center of gravity is over his base. Or not over his base, rather. So you chop here and you kick here. So you scissor. Scissor sweep. And you can pull yourself up on him if you want to, or you can roll away. I'd say the key for these three sweeps is is don't be flat. Be able to do like this, because the shoulders are flat. Keep this, you know, turn. Right? Back from when we did the very first stuff, ground fine stuff, was like the points, you want as few points on the ground as possible. You know, I want all six, you know, all four points. If I can get one point off the ground, that's all this space I can use. One point off the ground, or two points, two points, two points. If I can get off three, well, that's even better. If you're getting closer and closer to standing up. Okay, questions? Everybody got it? Got the technique? I can probably figure it out. Just okay. like before, but maybe I feel like, man, I just, I can't, like, he's still too, his base is still too good. I can't, I can't, like, uh, sweep him too well. All right, so you might hit out a little bit more, and I got my foot on his leg to help move me out. But I keep this, put your foot on his knee, and then everything else is the same. You push this out. So you elongate one side of his body so he can't post, and you still scissor with the other one. And then you could ride up on him or roll away. So it's basically the same thing. So it'll be easier for short people. So you can get your legs in there easier. <laughs> so try to push. Catch, and all you need to do is get something under here. So this is gonna be tricky, because it's like a matrix move. <laughs> so the thing, like, so you raise your legs and try to spin like you're a turtle on its back. So keep this cross. Spin, try to spin yourself perpendicular to him. 
and get one across his neck, one across his back. You want his, his elbow inside your hips, not outside. And then from here, I squeeze with my legs. I keep this in place and I lift with my hips. And is that the only elbow? Yeah. And that's what it is, elbow lock. So basically, once more, get your hands, you know, whatever side he goes with, then you go to the opposite side. But since we're here, he starts to lift up. I hook in, I, like even if you just make a fist, and you're gonna pull yourself to this side with your fist. So as I throw my legs kind of up and open and get myself to spin, I'm pulling with my arm as well. <clears throat> so we're here. I'm gonna get this on, lock it up. That's all it is. So uh, I'm just gonna borrow your leg so you can sit right there. It's yes, then yeah. The idea is you catch under the leg and you want to do that. So you have to round your back to stand. That's the hard part. It's harder if you're fat. If you're thin, this should be easy. If you're thin and light, you should, this should be pretty easy. Questions? That's the basic idea. So one arm in, or one arm in and one arm out. Because you set yourself up for Sankaku Jimmy. Uh, or Ashi Sankaku Jimmy. Um, so this is the setup. So from here, you extend, right? Extend and then push this over to the side. So from here, grab the back of his head. You don't want his upper body to be free. So I hook here. Then I can open my guard, put my foot on his hip, and use my, my thigh and my foot here to shoulder walk myself a little bit further away. Okay, so I've got all this control while I'm doing that. Then, shoot this leg over the back of his neck. If you can grab it, great. If you can't, you know, you can get his uh, sleeve, that's fine to you. And then the other foot now shoots over as deep as you can get it, preferably in your knee pit, but as deep as you can get it, then you've got three pressures. Knees come in, you grab the back of his head, pull it down, your hips go up. So you're squeezing from the sides, from the back, from the front. And there's a the tap. Okay. So one more time. So sides. Yes. <laughs> so set up position. And we'll talk about, I think we'll have time to get to this. So you get in the set up position. You can, you can get up, you can get close. Yeah. So probably got here this way. So first thing is extend the hips, feed this arm over deep. Control the back of the head. That way, and it can be a collar. That way you can now open this up. Cause I don't want to do this cause now he can just sit up and he's out. And then he's gonna rain down punches. So, uh, so you have your grip. Now you can open it up, foot in his hip. And I want to sort of walk myself away from him a little bit, bite the neck, grab it with the hand. So you're keeping a closed circuit on his head the whole time, or his upper body so he can't sit up. Shoot this as far as you can get it. Like I said, if you can get it in your knee pit, that's better, but this will work. Knees squeeze. You can see the look. Bang the head, hips go forward. So you squeeze, like when you have the back of the head, your hips basically, sorry, you're going like, like a squeeze, pull, lift the hips. So you're driving your hips into him, so you're pulling his head down and squeeze your knees. And you cut off the blood supply for his, for his brain, <clears throat> and he falls asleep. Questions? It's a lot of steps. Everybody got it? This, if he just doesn't know what he's doing, and he 
starts to dig his own arm under there because he wants to break it. It's like, thank you. Thanks for making it work for yourself. All right? So if he, if he tries to sneak one in, now, there's a caveat to that. If he really knows how to pass a guard, he may do that anyway because he knows what he's doing. So you'd have to be mindful, okay, is he just making a mistake or is he actually doing this purposely, like on purpose? So hopefully you get a read on your opponent that way. Anyway, uh, a couple ways to get to it if he's not doing it. So one is like a, like a forced method almost. So let's say we're in here and we've been defending punches. So of course he can now punch in the ribs, right? And so we have, we have this thing, right? Where if he punches both sides, then you trap his arms and you figure out where to go from there. If he's taking pressure back or if he's keeping pressure forward, depending on which stage of this you go to, right? So kind of the same thing. So here I feel that happening. So what I can do is keep my foot bent on his back from here and come around if I need to see because it's a little subtle move here. I mean like on this side for this arm. So you're here, right, to stop the punches. <clears throat> so what you can do is kind of slide and use your shin to push this back so that you get his wrist. So a couple different ways you can do this. Now, if you're flexible enough, you might push this back and pull your leg through and shoot over your shoulder. I'm not that flexible. So what I'll do is I'll extend this out this way and right when it's about to go, I tuck this in and go all the way around. So, so here, extend with my shin, keep extending until it's there and then I'm back to the setup. After that, everything's the same. So, one more time. <clears throat> so, I feel this happening. Catch it here. Push with my shin, get his wrist. I may have to pause here because I got to defend my against punches first. I'm trying to stay heavy on his back with my leg. So, it's harder for him to sit up and throw bombs. <clears throat> Plus, I got the head. So, uh, it, whenever I feel safe to do it, kind of extend this with extending this. So I'm not like pulling and doing this, I'll just break my own grip. I'm pushing it all away. That tuck, all right? So here, push it all away, shoot that over, get the lock up. And then from here, everything's the same. So try that as a, how to get to the set.